from the Thomas Kincaid Studios at the Epcot Festival of the Arts. Mr. Cheesy Pop. Hey everyone, it's Max. I am here at the Thomas Kincaid Studios booth here at Epcot in Walt Disney World at the Festival of the Arts. We're in the beautiful Italy Pavilion and you can see some amazing artwork behind me. And today we are going to meet the artist behind that artwork, Monty Moore. Hello, Monty. Hey Max, how's it going? Thanks for having me here and uh, being able to debut the new art. Super excited to uh, chat with you about these new pieces. So today we have, uh, we're debuting uh, Cold Pursuit and A New Direction. These are both from season two, which is an ongoing season. And we're doing a painting from every episode for the fans. Uh, brought to you by Thomas Kincaid Studios. And I think it's very appropriate that I must say that the painter of light, uh, today we have very bright, wonderful it, sunshine. Uh, I'm not wearing glasses because I think I'm <laughs> that cool. It's just that bright and warm and beautiful here. It is. Uh, it's gorgeous though. Uh, the light, you, I mean, this is, it does look like a Kincaid. Yeah, no, it, actually I probably couldn't paint clouds that were that nice, but those are quite beautiful. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, dive into some questions, Absolutely. shall we? All right, cool. So what was it like working on the Mandalorian? In collection with the Thomas Kincaid Studios? Uh, I have been an illustrator for almost 30 years, so for me it's a culmination of working in comics, games, and movies, and this is like the pinnacle, it's the apex to get to work on uh, not only Star Wars, which I have done some in the past, but specifically the Mandalorian collection, and to be chosen as the exclusive artist for it is kind of the, the, the top point of my career. And so I, I, I couldn't be happier and because of the quality of the, the program and the series, uh, it's just something that I love all the way around from an artist and from a fan standpoint. So I own the Mandalorian Turning Point. Yeah, this is the absolute, this is the first uh, piece that was released in the Mandalorian collection. Cool, so I love it. Uh, especially the use of light, which is such an important part. Uh, of Thomas Kincaid's style and continues to play an important role in Thomas Kincaid Studios art. What is it like to apply some of his techniques to your style? Uh, I definitely always look for opportunities so uh, to be able to show having the light sources and have it play across figures and elements in it. So in this first piece when we see this critical turning point of the Mandalorian going from being kind of a heartless bounty hunter who's in it for the money to really connecting with uh, the child and we see you know a little bit of light coming between the fingers mm -hmm. so all of this plays into the composition but especially with the light playing across the figure is that also indicative of a change of him as a character going towards the light mm -hmm. from the darkness which is over here behind him so uh, there, a lot of times there can also be uh, subliminal or not really subliminal but uh, symbolism in the art and for me uh, that that light symbolizes that for our characters and the journey they're about to go on. So tell me about two of your newest works of art in the Mandalorian collection. The Mandalorian and Uneasy Alliance and the Mandalorian Undeterred which you just unveiled mm -hmm. during Star Wars Bring Home the Bounty event. Yep, I happen to have two samples here so folks can see the art and in uh, An Uneasy Alliance you get this great quiet moment that's very powerful. Yeah. Uh, all the characters around the glow of the campfire and you're not exactly sure which characters that our heroes can trust uh, and uh, finishing out season one we have undeterred with uh, Grand Moff Gideon uh, atop of his Rex side fighter and his little jaw was down at the bottom and light breaking through the background you have this defiant character who's undeterred who's sort of saying i'm still here and i'm not that easy to kill we get a view of this dark saber and as fans we're like whoa what is that <laughs> and so i love those moments because it, it's much like we see Grogu the first time oh, yeah. and we're just it just wants us more like wait a minute i gotta wait for another season <laughs> it's awesome i love it so my next question is did you decide what you'd like to illustrate for the Mandalorian collection or were you given specific scenes? One of the things I love the most about doing the series is I get to propose the ideas so I'm not being told what to illustrate. So uh, at the very beginning I'll watch the, an episode for the third or fourth time and then I'll be taking notes for myself and I'll start doing small thumbnail sketches to really rough loose concepts. 
and then uh, we'll have a meeting with uh, the folks at Comics Kincaid Studios mm -hmm. and Lucasfilm yeah. and discuss what we think that, uh, from a fan perspective, uh, it is important to show in uh, that particular episode or an iconic turning point, something that will visually resonate with the fans of Star Wars and the uh, collectors of Thomas Kincaid Studios art. And so I do get a lot of freedom. Uh, and so far, uh, with the success of the series, it, it, uh, I, I think we're on the right path. This is the way. This is the way. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, so have you made previous appearances in Disney parks with your art? Uh, what, what was that like? This is only my second one here at Festival of the Arts. Uh, I was uh, very honored to come down in July, this past July, and we had an event at Disney Springs, mm -hmm. and that was the first time ever that I got to do an official on-park signing, and so yeah. to get to go there, unveil some of the new pieces, and do my first ever yeah. Star Wars, Disney, Mandalorian, you know, signing was uh, a very special moment for me, kind of a pinnacle of the yeah. career kind of moment to walk in and see your name on that sign and see fans ready and waiting. Uh, and we signed for the fans, we took pictures, I draw little sketch remarks on the back of the prints and, and uh, everybody had a great time. So, well, it is so wonderful to have you here at Festival of the Arts. It's one of my personal favorites. Um, and you're releasing two new works of art today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have uh, so exciting. Yeah, can you tell me about them? Yeah, so yeah. this is uh, Cold Pursuit, which is uh, from season two, uh, episode two, and this is the uh, following piece, and this is a new direction. And so uh, I've been super excited to release these because, as an artist, you get you create the work, but it might be a few months before the actual release happens. So uh, I, this one to me is a very cool blending of uh, the items, uh, ships from classic Star Wars, so we actually get X-Wings uh, with Mando's ship here as it rips down the icy canyon walls. So it's reminiscent of Hoth and Empire Strikes Back, but we get a melding of both the new and the classic Star Wars. So this is one of my absolute favorite pieces in the whole series. And then with A New Direction, we really get an opportunity to paint, to paint classic Kincaidian light and sunset as it plays off both of our uh, central characters with, we've just met the Mandalorian mercs as they uh, blast off in the, in the background with uh, uh, Bo-Katan. And uh, so one of the things that I love about this is, you know, the, you get the expression on Grogu's face. He's like, well, what now? And so it's called <laughs> A New Direction because he came here with a certain plan of who he was going to meet. And he's like, oh, okay, now we, now we got to have a new direction yet again. So it kind of sums it up a little bit. Um, but you still get the connection between both uh, our, our central character and Mando, as well as his charge, Grogu. Although we haven't we haven't learned his name yet. He's still the child at right, this right. point. <laughs> <laughs> so can you talk about how you got into the entertainment, gaming, and comics part of the art industry? I was just finishing uh, my degree in art and illustration, and I met some friends who were self-publishing their own comic. And so uh, I joined their group, and I became the colorist. And back then, before digital coloring, we hand painted everything. So I hand painted and airbrushed my first comic book in 1992, 93, and we went to the San Diego Comic Con, you know, the granddaddy of them all. <laughs> and um, uh, that was my introduction into that. And then eventually, I started freelancing for other smaller publishers. And it's just kind of a stair step, you know, kind of process. And you, I would submit my art to other companies that I wanted to work for, including Lucasfilm. And I had a stack of rejection letters like this, right? You have to have thick yeah. skin, and all yeah. the time you're, you're not ready, right? Yeah. So in this kind of uh, career, you're building skills. You're getting to the point. You don't get to come out of college and say, hey, guess what? I get yeah. to work for Star Wars. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah. We all want that. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I kept all those rejection letters. I still have them. But eventually, about 10 years later in 1998, I got my first opportunity to work on Star Wars when Steve Sansweet, who was the head of fan content, mm -hmm. uh, you might know him from Rancho Obi-Wan, he's the owner and proprietor of the official Star Wars Museum, uh, and I have several pieces in there, and yeah. he put my name forward to the Topps Card Company, who was doing the hand-drawn sketch cards for Revenge of the Sith, yeah. and I had done some fan art up until then, 
uh, and uh, that was my first opportunity. And so, you know, yeah. you had stair steps from there, and that led to other things such as Star Wars Galaxies, the video game. Yeah. Uh, I got to design the uh, R2-D2 folding chair uh, that was on Think Geek, and there's one of those is so actually cool. in the Rancho Obi-Wan collection. And now you get to the, the pinnacle. This is, you know, an ongoing series as opposed to a lot of the times the other projects, they're one shot. Mm -hmm. You get hired to be on them like a lot of other artists and you move on and that's great. So to to have a project like this that's now going into two years is, uh, you know, very different and uh, pretty awesome to get to really help define the style and the look and the content of this fine art series. Was this industry something you always dreamed about working in? No, I wouldn't say my goals were that lofty. I thought mm -hmm. uh, in getting a degree in graphic design and illustration that I would work on brochures and logos and, you know, paint an illustration of a bulldozer. Uh, I once did an illustration of a pulp making machine, but it also, you know, helped pay for my school. But then mm -hmm. once I got exposed to the pop culture side of the industry and thinking, wow, I, I can actually draw dragons and, and starships and, you know, Star Wars characters and things, you're like, well, this is way cool yeah. over here. But uh, originally, uh, my dream wasn't to do that. You hear a lot of time with comic book artists, oh, all I ever wanted to do was to draw for, you know, this company. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to draw comics. And mm -hmm. mine was a path of self-discovery rather than, I want to work on Star Wars. Like, I never, I didn't have goals that were that lofty until okay. you get in the door. And then once you start working, you think, yeah. okay, well, this would be the pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, and so my my dreams and goals kind of evolved with my career to the point of, of where I am now. And I don't know where it'll be in the future because right now I'm happy with exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> so <laughs> <Exactly>. cool. <laughs> so did you have any artists that inspired you growing up uh, or today? Uh, yeah, there's a pretty long list of illustrators, people like Drew Struzan, who did a lot of the original Star Wars movie posters and the re-releases in the uh, early 90s, uh, Norman Rockwell, artists who painted covers for Heavy Metal Magazine, Boris Vallejo, Frank Pizzetta, uh, it, it's just a long list, a lot of more fantasy artists, yeah. and our, artists who worked in the role-playing game and the pop culture industry. Uh, so a lot of them were illustrators, and then my very oldest inspirations would be artists like Da Vinci and Michelangelo, who one of the things that I love about them is they were well-rounded artists, so rather than just doing one thing, rather than saying, oh, I just paint this, they they painted, they drew, they had inventions, they wrote, so they were well-rounded, hence the term renaissance man. And so I myself, as an artist, I try to be a renaissance man as well, so I enjoy drawing and painting, I do sculpture, I write in public graphic novels, and so I do am trying to follow in their footsteps with being a well-rounded artist and a lot of that comes from those inspirations. Cool. So you've developed work for companies like Lucasfilm, Disney, and Marvel. Mm -hmm. Is there something that was a dream moment for you where you, you had to pinch yourself or you know some piece of art that you feel most proud of? Uh, you know, in the Mandalorian collection, uh, I think the piece that resonates with me is Two for the Road. Uh, because you have both characters and you have this pivotal moment where he has uh, the ball and the gear shift and he goes from, you know, Grogu being an inconvenience to uh, actually, uh, you know, them as sort of a unit. But, um, you know, walking into the Art of Disney uh, when there's a poster that says, you know, Monty Moore signing, uh, that stands out to me. And not just because it's Star Wars or not because it's this project. I have gotten to work on uh, a lot of really big kind of IP stuff, but usually you're you're just part of a studio of artists, mm -hmm. right? So I did get to work on um, Star Wars Galaxies, the video game, mm -hmm. uh, and I have done other licensed work. Uh, one of the first times I was uh, published was for Tops for Revenge of the Sith trading cards. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there's little steps along the way, but usually you're part of a whole army of artists, yeah. you know, that are creating this, because it, you know, kind of takes a village. Yeah. Um, but so this is singularly unique in that to be selected as the exclusive artist for this fine art series is well, it's pretty rare in the industry. Most of the time, you're, you're kind of working in the background. You know, I consider myself a journeyman artist, meaning mm -hmm. you're in the trenches, you're getting the work done, 
and uh, you don't really get this opportunity right. to actually show your work and be in the yeah. public and say, hey, people can buy it and, and own it and enjoy it and have a sketch and a remark and a photo with the artist. You really don't get that much. You just work late nights in the studio and you do the work, you do the job that you're hired for. Uh, so to me, this is a lot more uh, special uh, to uh, get to, I don't know, kind of ride the lightning a little bit. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You also illustrate pieces in the Western cinema, fine art, wildlife, and horses genre. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you feel connected to since youth? Yeah, so uh, I was uh, unique in the fact that I grew up on a, a rather large cattle ranch in Idaho. Wow. So my summers were actually spent, you know, doing cattle drives and roping and, you know, branding and everything that goes along with Western life. So although I grew up a Star Wars kid, mm -hmm. uh, I was surrounded by actually all of the heritage of wow. uh, ranching and things like that. My, my dad is a rancher, my mom uh, was a fine artist, and so... Uh, Going back to my roots in about 2018, I decided to sort of add another branch to the tree, and that's when I started illustrating uh, Western and wildlife. And, and sometimes I'll do Western cinema themed pieces, you know, like Tombstone or uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, John Wayne, Clint yes. Eastwood. Yeah. Uh, because those are also things I grew up with, much like Star Wars, but in the Western genre, because you know, I believe it or not, I had a horse. Wow, yeah. Of course, my horse's name was Pegasus because I was a, of course, you know, a, yeah, a nerd. <laughs> Clash of the Titans. Of course, okay. I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna name my horse Pegasus. <laughs> yeah. So that's really cool. So, okay. Final question is, where can we buy your art? Uh, so, of course, the the Thomas Kincaid Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, you would go to their website. Uh, thomaskincaidstudios.com and there's a whole write-up on Mandalorian. You can see all those pieces. Uh, if people are interested in the Western and wildlife art, mm -hmm. I would encourage them to visit theartofmontemore.com uh, and they can see the Western and the wildlife and the horses and uh, those kinds of subjects that are different from this. Uh, and that way they can see a little bit of the, the breadth. There's even a couple of uh, fine art bronzes on there. I have a ram and a buffalo, a few other pieces. Uh, so wow. I like so to be diverse. You certainly are. Wow, this was so cool. Thanks Thank you, very Monty. much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. So awesome. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for uh, supporting this project and make sure that you enjoy uh, Epcot if you come down to Festival of the Arts. And uh, remember, this is the way. This is the way. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Monty Moore. Thank you so much. Oh, there he is. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks so much to the Thomas Kincaid Studios for setting this up. This was so neat. Uh, and check out all of the Thomas Kincaid Studios art right here at the Epcot Festival of the Arts. Link in the description to go check out all of this. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks again. Like, subscribe, check out my Patreon page. Have a magical day, everybody. Bye.